I woke up and I was really sick and I was broken out and uh, so I went to the NASA doctors and I said, I'm something wrong with me and he looked at me and started doing some tests and said, you got the measles. Well, I mean, they were stunned. <laughs> you know, kids get the measles, not astronauts. <laughs> so uh, I said, well, what do, you, what do we do? And he said, well, uh, we'll have to check everybody. So they checked Lovell and uh, uh, Jim and Fred and everybody else on the prime crew and backup crew. And everybody had the measles except for Manningly. So the big debate was, uh, who do we take off? And I guess this, was, this took a couple of days before, uh, before so it was more than three days before. I think the, the decision was made about three days before. Uh, anyway, uh, they had a debate uh, whether we should take him off and take, put him on. And anyway, uh, I got, uh, of course I was sick, so the backup crew couldn't take, uh, take their place. And Manning couldn't go, so they decided to change out one guy. And it was amazing with the, the similarity of our training that we could do that and get yep. ready to launch within just a very short period of time. Well, it turned out uh, we, uh, after that, and I ended up in Mission Control, which I'll talk about later, but uh, when I got ready to fly, Fred was a uh, commander, a backup commander on Apollo 16, and I think you were helping close out, I'm not sure, but on the back of my couch, on Apollo 16, it was typhoid berry seat. <laughs> uh, Ken, and incidentally, Ken Mattingly still today, I think Ken's a year younger than me, so he's 75 going on 76, he still never had the measles. <laughs> never had the measles. Uh, Jim, um, what do, you, what do you think the impact on your crew was of uh, changing out uh, crew members at the last minute? Well, to, to elaborate, it wasn't just about four days because uh, we found out that uh, Charlie had the measles and that uh, Hayes and I, that went, we were married and so we had kids that had the measles and we had the measles when we were kids. So you we were married were, to Fred? <laughs> so we were immune to the disease. <laughs> and Manley was, was a bachelor never was married, never had the measles. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And I argued with the doctors. I said, look, I, I can't think of a better place to have the measles than a nice, cozy spacecraft orbit to the moon. <laughs> because we worked very closely as a team for, you know, months to make sure the third team would work. And, uh, but I was overruled, and uh, Swanker was put on board. Now, the movie, if those of you have seen it, appears like Swiker had, had to earn his wings every day. Suddenly, you know, he was taking care of the people coming down for the watching the launch, getting the hotel rooms, and, and he was a bachelor, and uh, you know, he's taking care of everything. And, uh, and, uh, and, and and suddenly he got on board, and so they, the movie sort of made him look like he had to earn his wings every day. Actually, Swiker was a very competent pilot who had worked on the malfunction procedures of the command module. So if I needed somebody to replace Madeley, uh, Swiker was the guy to go. Fred, what did you think about that? Well, to me, the, the thing that it was an emotional thing, there's no question about that. Uh, you know, and there's some real things. Uh, we were allowed to invite uh, guests uh, to see the launch. And of course, Ken had uh, quite a few people coming with irrevocable airline tickets and those days I think you had to sign up for three days in a motel hotel at Cocoa Beach. So uh, they were now coming to uh, see the wrong person uh, launch. <laughs> and of course Jack, jokingly, he, he didn't have time to get his five girlfriends <laughs> there, there in time. But another little, little thing that to me was important was we were allowed to carry this uh, little package uh, called a PPK, a personal preference kit. And I spent some time uh, talking to people, and, and it had to be very small items, and you know, something very personal, like I, I had a favorite aunt, uh, she really wanted me to carry her rosary beads, and I, I couldn't fit them. I uh, wish later I might have had them, but <laughs> <laughs> I, took, I just took the crucifix off uh, the rosary beads, and I had that in the PPK. I had a, a fellow, a test pilot at Edwards, uh, 
he wanted me to fly a ring of his. So it was those kind of things that, uh, again, uh, Ken had had time, and I'm sure he went to family and friends and, and had this little vacuum packed thing all set to go. And of course, you know, that, that late, uh, get ready to launch, Jack didn't have time to do a, a similar thing he might have wanted to uh, do for people. But it was, you know, you just break up the team. Ken uh, and Jim and I had actually been through uh, uh, a training cycle before 13. We were the backup crew on Apollo 11. So we had already gone through one cycle as a group. And uh, just to have that happen that late, it, uh, it was very emotional. Let me mention uh, one more thing about Jack, which I think is kind of interesting. Little known, too. We took off on April 11th, 1970. And April 15th was tax day. Well, Jack was all prepared to take, his ta you know, take care of his taxes prior to the 15th because he was the backup and still going to be aboard. We took off and he completely forgot about it for a day and a half. And suddenly he looked at us as we were going towards the moon before the explosion. And he looked at us, his face was ashen. And he said, You know, I didn't pay my taxes. <laughs> and we all sort of laughed. <laughs> And he said, no, this is serious. <laughs> you know, they're going to get me for this. <laughs> you know, and finally, that, that message got all the way down to the control center, and there's a big kafal right all throughout the control center. And finally, someone came back up and said, we know somebody who will take care of you because you're out of the country. <laughs> you know, I, I've often wondered, Jim, you, you can probably answer this question. Uh, Apollo 13 covers, insurance covers, photographs, mostly are signed by you and Ken and Fred. How many did Jack Swagger send, uh, sign? Did, did, was, there, was there another issue? Well, you mean Jack signing photographs? Well, yeah, see, most of the ones I see are you and, and TK and Fred. Oh, but there are some, I'm sure, that are you and Jack. Oh, yeah, they're just floating around uh, for some time. I've seen a lot of Jack Swigert's uh, signatures. Well, when we came back, there was a lot after we had uh, come back because Jack was obviously the, uh, uh, the, the third group member. As a matter of fact, another interesting uh, incident, uh, we had on the lunar module, which was, which was uh, uh, put onto the strut of the lunar module, a plaque, which every flight had uh, since Apollo 11, uh, with this, the crew's signatures assigned, uh, assigned on it, in, you know, etched on the uh, on the metal. And of course, it was uh, Lovell, uh, Manley, Hayes. But then, you know, we suddenly switched. Well, the lunar module was already stuffed away up there at the top of the gantry, <laughs> and so quickly they made another plaque that changed out from Manley to to Lovell, Swiker, Hayes. And uh, that was the job that I was supposed to do when I first got down to the, to the lunar surface, was to slap this other plaque on, onto the strut so that he would be properly uh, designated as one of the people that landed on the moon. 